Welcome to lecture 6 guys. Now we've talked about the various macronutrients and micronutrients, it's time to concentrate on metabolism. Or in other words, the factors that will determine how quickly you will burn off the food you eat. Generally speaking, there are three main body types. Ectomorphs, who are people that find it easy to lose weight and hard to gain weight. Mesomorphs, who find it well fairly easy to gain and lose weight. And endomorphs, who find it hard to lose weight but very easy to gain weight. As you probably know, people with slow metabolism tend to gain weight fairly easy, while people with fast metabolism seem to eat whatever they want and still stay quite slim. So the speed of your metabolism is the determining factor of how quickly you will burn off the extra fat. Your metabolism is influenced by two main factors, basal metabolic rate, BMR in short, which is the amount of calories you will burn at rest doing absolutely nothing. And activity level, how active you are in your day job and outside of it. So let's examine each of those in more detail so that you get better understanding of how to speed up your metabolism and ultimately burn more fat. Basal metabolic rate or BMR is the amount of calories that your body burns to sustain itself. This includes maintaining your body temperature, cardiovascular, nervous system and all other involuntary activities that happen on both internal and external level. There are many elements that can affect your BMR. The major ones are your gender. Well, men tend to burn more calories than women do, largely due to differences on hormonal level. A woman's hormonal system resists changes in the body composition as a protective mechanism to conserve energy stores while pregnant. I know ladies, it may suck to burn less calories, but that's just how it is. Your age is the second factor. The younger you are, the higher your BMR is. Your body mass is the third factor. The heavier you are, the more calories you burn. Obviously, a 100 kg man will burn significantly more calories to maintain his body compared to a 70 kg man. And finally, your body composition. The leaner you are, the more calories you will burn. Muscle mass is much denser and it requires greater deal of energy to get it into motion compared to fat. So if you compare two men who have identical genetics and both weigh about 80 kg, but one is at 30% body fat, while the other is at 20% body fat, the second guy will burn more calories for the same period of time doing the same activities. There are many more factors that could be taken into account, but those are the major ones that we will concentrate on. Obviously, you have no control over the first one being age and sex, but you can totally change your body mass and body composition, which will greatly affect the speed of your metabolism. The huge mistake that so many people do on a fat loss diet is that they concentrate too much on their body mass or how much they weigh as opposed to how lean they are. And here is an example why this is a mistake. Imagine that both you and your friend are on a fat loss diet. You're on the somatomic weight loss diet, obviously, and your friend, who we will call John, is on the miracle diet, which is a completely random example, although I will not be surprised if there is such a diet out there. But anyway, for the sake of easy calculations, we shall presume that you both weigh about 100 kg and you are both at 20% body fat. This means you both have about 20 kg of body fat and 80 kg of lean muscle mass. By the end of his diet, your friend has lost 10 kg through a lot of food deprivation and little exercise, so your friend is now 90 kg, but he is still at 20% body fat. This means that he has now 72 kg of lean muscle mass and 18 kg of body fat. So the 10 kg he has lost are actually coming from 8 kg muscle mass and 2 kg body fat. Now back to you. For the same period of time, you've only lost 5 kg, but your body fat percentage has dropped down to 15%. So you're now 95 kg, but you have 81 kg of lean muscle. You've actually added a kg of muscle mass and 14 kg of body fat. So you lost 6 kg from fat. Now, who has lost more? This might not be the most practical example, but it's simple enough to illustrate the point that it's not just about losing weight. It's about changing your body composition by increasing your muscle mass 
and decreasing your body fat, which is ultimately what will lead to greater results. As I already mentioned, lean body mass is one of the major contributors to higher metabolism. So while your friend has lost more weight, you'll quickly regain it after the diet, while your metabolism has actually increased despite the small amount of lost weight. Now let's move to calculating your basal metabolic rate. Before we get into the formula, bear in mind that they will not give you a number with precise certainty. Every formula can have some margin of error. The leaner you are, the more likely it is to give you an understated number, meaning you need more calories and the more overweight you are, the more likely it is to give you an understated number, meaning that you actually need less cal calories than that. So use any of those formulas as a starting point and then adjust according to the changes your body undergoes. The two most important formulas for calculating your BMR are Harvey's Benedict formula and Mifflin St. Jor formula. Recently, the American Dietetic Association, um, ADA, published a comparison study of various equations and found out that Mifflin St. Jor to be the more accurate one. So this is the one we will use. Feel free to pause the video and calculate your BMR. And it is as follows. For men, it's uh, 10 times the weight in kg plus your height in centimeters multiplied by 6.25 minus 5 times your age plus 5. For women, it's um, your weight multiplied by 10 plus your height in centimeters once again multiplied by 6.25 minus 5 times your age minus 161. There is also another formula, the catch McArdle formula, which should be able to give you an even more precise BMR um, as it takes into account body fat percentage. It looks like this, for man and woman, BMR equals 370 plus 21.6 multiplied by your lean body mass. A lean body mass is your weight minus your body fat percentage multiplied by your weight. Um, you actually have to have your body fat percentage measured to be able to use this formula. The problem with the formula is that most people don't know their body fat percentage. Um, the most commonly used method to measure it is the skid fault test, in which a personal trainer or someone who knows how to uh, measure with calipers measures the amount of fat under the skin at various body sites. The numbers are then um, put into an equation and that should give you uh, your body fat percentage. Needless to say, there is always a margin of error. That is the case even with uh, the most sophisticated tracking methods, although the margin is much smaller with them. Anyway, if you do not know your body fat index, just uh, use the Mifflin say jaw formula which is fairly accurate. BMR gives you the amount of calories you will burn in 24 hour period if you do nothing. The thing is, we do guys, and some of you are quite active. So once you get your BMR number, you need to multiply it by the appropriate factor, and they are as follows. If you are a sedentary individual with little or no exercise, you multiply your BMR by 1.2. If you are lightly active, which is you know training between one and three days a week, you multiply by 1.375. If you're moderately active, exercising three to five days a week, um, then you multiply by 1.55. And if you are very active, you're training between six, seven days a week, you multiply your BMR by 1.725. Finally, if you're extra active, you're training twice a day, your, phys your job is very physical, then you multiply your BMR by 1.9. Great, so the number you have now is called calorie maintenance level. This means that if you are consuming that amount of calories every day, you will neither lose nor gain weight. But the thing is, you want to lose weight. So you need to do one last thing, which is subtract calories from your calorie maintenance level in order to create a calorie deficit. How much? Well, a good rule of thumb is a decrease of about 20%. So you will multiply your calorie maintenance level by 0.8, which is 80%. And the number you get is the amount of calories you need to consume on a daily basis. So if you're maintaining your weight at about 3000 calories, in order for you to lose weight, you will need to multiply by 0.8, which will give you 2400 calories. Generally speaking, you shouldn't decrease your daily calorie intake by more than 500 calories. 
Um, although some people go into extremes and decrease their intake by as much as 40%, but that's very risky approach and usually done by advanced athletes and competitors. In your case, 20% should be more than enough. The important thing to remember is that you should constantly keep track of the changes of your body. This way you will know whether you should increase or decrease the amount of calories you consume. Okay guys, so that was the end of lecture 6. I know it's been a long one, but you've just set some very solid base for your future progression. So there are two numbers I want you to take with you on our next lecture. Your calorie maintenance level and your fat loss calorie level. You will see why we need those in our next lecture. Thank you for watching and see you in lecture 7.